This video provides some handworked examples for students to go through. It's been shown that there are two simple controllability tests for state space models, and the tests are the same whether you have a continuous state space model or a discrete state space model. And here we've emphasized that we're going to have n states. So the controllability matrix must be full rank, and the controllability matrix is defined as mc equals b, comma a b, all the way up to a to the n minus 1 b. Alternatively, you can check the matrix VB must have no zero rows, where V is the left eigenvector, so W lambda V is the eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition of the matrix A. In practice, an eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition is non-trivial and not a paper and pen exercise, so you would have to do that by computer. And so these examples, we're going to focus on the use of the controllability matrix, which is given here. Now, even though this is a bit more straightforward, it is reiterated that in the vast majority of cases, you would even want to use a computer for the controllability matrix, because as soon as matrix dimensions get to 3 by 3, 4 by 4, doing this by hand is just too tedious. Hand calculations are useful to gain insight and understanding, so it's worth doing some, but you don't want to overdo it. First example then, you're given the matrices A and B, and we want to know, is this system controllable? And as we've said, what we're going to do is use the controllability matrix. So here, I've already got B, so my first step is to calculate AB. Well here, AB is clearly given by 4 and 0. So now I can find MC, which is BAB, so it's going to be 0. 2, 4, 0, and this is clearly full rank because it's got this diagonal structure. I can see that with doing any calculations, and therefore it's fully observable. So that was a straightforward example. Example 2. Now this one you'll notice has been given in control canonical form. And so what we want to check is, is this controllable? Because it's got three states, our MC has got three terms. We've got B, AB, and A squared B. So first of all, let's work out AB. So AB is going to be given by 1, 1, and 0. And now let's work A squared B, which you'll notice the easiest way to calculate this is A times AB, because you already know AB. So A times AB is going to give us 4, 1, and 1. So now I can work out MC. So MC is going to be given as B, which is 1, 0, 0, AB, which is 1, 1, 0, and A squared B, which is 4, 1, 1. And again, this is clearly full rank. You can see that because it's got this upper triangular structure and it's got ones on the diagonal. So therefore, this system is fully controllable as expected. Here's example three. Now, this is also in control canonical form, but you'll notice it's the alternative form where now the coefficients are on the bottom row. So we're going to do the same point here. First, calculate A, B. So A, B in this case is going to be 0, 1, 4. And then we calculate a squared b, which is the same as a into ab, which is going to give me 1, 4, and 17. So now finally, we put this all together. We write mc. And what do we get? We get 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 4, and 1, 4, 17. So again, you can see because it's got this triangular structure, it must be full rank. And therefore, it's fully controllable as expected. Example 4. Now, in this example, we've been a bit nasty. Look at this A matrix and you say, yikes, it's got decimal places, it's full, it's got nine terms. If you're asking me to calculate B, A, B and A squared B, I'm going to start getting fed up. If you get this in an exam, 
I would say your examiner doesn't like you. So for this one, I'm going to use MATLAB to do the calculation. So I'm going to say the controllability matrix, I've used this command here, controllability AB, and here is the controllability matrix, and you see it's full. It's got nine terms, so calculating that by hand, it might take you 10 minutes. And now, to test the rank, I'm just going to find the determinant of MC, and here you can see the determinant is 0 0.5, so I'm confident that this is full rank, and so this system is fully controllable. Example 5. Find K such that the following example is uncontrollable and show that the associated transfer function has a cancelling pole zero pair. So the first thing to do is obviously define the controllability matrix. So MC equals B, AB. There's only two states, so only need two terms. Now this is going to be given by we know what B is, it's minus 1, 2, and AB, you can do in a fairly straightforward fashion, you'll see that it's 1.8, and then it's minus K, minus 2.4. So now, if I calculate the determinant of MC, you'll find it's K plus 2.4, minus 3.6, which is k minus 1.2 and therefore the determinant of MC equals 0 if k equals 1.2. So that's the first step. It said find k such the following example is uncontrollable. It's uncontrollable if the controllability matrix is rank deficient and because it's square here that's equivalent to the determinant being 0 and the determinant is 0 if k is 1.2. So that's step 1. The next bit was show that the associated transfer function has a cancelling pole 0 pair. So now what we need to do is find the associated transfer function. So let's do that. So g equals c into si minus a inverse in to B. So you remember from series 1, this is how we find the associated transfer function. So let's put in the numbers. So we get C into S plus 1, and then minus 0 0.4, and then minus 1.2, and then S plus 1.2, and that's all inverse in to B. And that we do it, you're still going to get C. I'll worry about what C is in a bit. And then square brackets, we're going to get S plus 1.2, 0 0.4, 1.2, S plus 1, all into B. And then that's all going to be divided by S squared plus 2.2S plus 0 0.72. Now what I'm going to do next is multiply through by B and I'm going to factorise the denominator. So we've now got G of S equals C. Now if I multiply that square brackets by B, you'll get this minus S plus 0.4 and then you'll get 2 into S plus 0.4. And then the denominator, if I factorise the denominator, you'll see it takes the form s plus 1.8, s plus 0.4. Now I haven't used the C matrix yet, but actually I don't need to, because now I can see exactly what it is that I was looking for. I can see that there's a cancellation between the numerator and the denominator. There's a factor s plus 0 0.4 in the denominator and all the numerator terms. And multiplying by c is neither here nor there. If I do multiply by c, I can do that. You'll find you get 5s plus 0 0.4 over s plus 1.8, s plus 0 0.4, and the cancellation is still obvious.